Okay, my name is Aliva. Welcome to this quick video that will not at all be edited or anything of that sort. Just pure knowledge. What I want to speak about today is basically how do you test products? If you want, let's say you want to make a dropshipping store, right? It's probably one of the most famous online business models out there, right? So how do you actually find a product that works? Everyone has a different strategy, but what is something tangible that you can do today to find out what works? That's what we are going to cover today. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Oliver. I run an e-commerce development agency. What we do is we do acquisitions. So we make sure that this uh, e-commerce company gets a lot of traffic in. Then we make sure that the traffic actually converts, which means conversion rate optimization. It could be things like web design, copyright, and whatever it might be, building funnels, all of that. And then we work retention. So we make sure that those customers actually come back. So acquisition, conversion, and retention, everything that a, a e-commerce business would need on the acquisition side. So now that's out of the way. How do we actually test products? How do we find out what type of products work? How do we find out what type of funnels work? All of these kind of things. So whenever we test something, and this goes for business, it goes for private life, it goes for you know your freaking meal plan, it goes for the books you read, it goes for how you're taking notes, whatever it might be. We only want to change one variable at a time because as soon as you begin changing more than one variable at a time, well, then you don't really know what made the thing work, okay? So how do you find a winning product? Follow me on this. You find three to five products, or you could do 10 products, or you could do 20. The number really doesn't matter. Of course, the more products you test, the higher possibility that you'll find a good one, but also the more expensive it's gonna be and the more time consuming it's gonna be. So what I would recommend is, of course, do your research. What do you want to sell? What do you have some knowledge about? What is, what is something that you basically want to work with, right? Then find three to five products you can go on AliExpress. That's the most popular thing. Um, I don't recommend actually building and scaling your business around a drop shipping concept. I would recommend you to first find a product that works, then private label it, and then um, go in and make more value around it. So you can develop it in some ways. You can begin actually developing your own product, which is at the later stage. But first of all, you want to find out what kind of stuff actually sells. What can I sell? Then you want to put your, your own brand on it. Um, and then you can develop from that. So the first stage is what we talk about here. You find three to five products. And the way that you want to test this is you basically want to do what's called pre-totyping. And pre-totyping as compared to minimum viable product, which is the MVP that probably some of you uh, have heard about that concept. The MVP is essentially the idea that you make and the pre-totyping is what happens as soon as you begin to test that idea. So what we're doing here is we are, we are not guessing, we are not looking at numbers, we're not doing anything, we're just simply putting something out there, we're putting five thing, things out in the market and we look at which one gets picked the most. We put five different fruits in the market, in the basket, in the kindergarten and we see which kind of fruit they, the children takes most of, right? Because that's just basically how we can get the most accurate data. So we don't worry too much. This is just what we do. Now, here is how we do it. We find those products. We build five funnels. So if we have five products, we build five funnels. All of them are identical. So you start by making the first funnel, copy that over as a template. You can use system, you can use click funnels, you can use a whole lot of other things. I would not recommend actually building out a Shopify store for this or a WooCommerce store or anything, because right now you're just testing. And if you need to build a new store every time you're testing, well, then you're wasting your time, right? It's not efficient. So you build a funnel, you use it as a template to make the other funnels. You use the same colors, you use the same everything. The only thing that changes is the image of the product and the specifications of what it can do and the benefits of what it can do and maybe the pricing, right? Like you, everything is the same. I would even recommend that you go find something in the same price range because then that is not gonna make the difference, okay? So everything is similar. Now you have the landing page. You have the payment system down here. You can choose to collect payments and then once you get a payment, you know, you message your customer and you say, hey, 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 Dorit, you know, we're so happy to see your order. You know, unfortunately, we're getting a whole lot of traffic right now. So uh, it might be a bit delayed. And then you hurry up to call the Chinese guy and say, hey, you know, ship it, ship it, ship it to Dorit. And then that's going to take uh, quite a bit of while. Or you can be the honest 
person with a lot of integrity and just make it so they think they purchased and then send them a message. Hey, you know, see here, we actually didn't pull anything because this is a test page, blah, blah, blah. But here is a gift card for when we actually launch. That's another way of doing it. So um, once we have that established, this is our goal. We want people to click purchase, right? Because before they click purchase, you have not validated anything. If they look at your shit, but they don't buy it, you haven't validated anything. You have not validated anything. Okay, because attention only sells when it's monetized. You need the attention, but you also need to monetize it. And right now we're trying to figure out how can we the most easily monetize attention. So once we have the landing pages, then the second step, so we're moving backwards here, actually, as you can see, the second step is to build the acquisition funnel for this. So let's say we use fact the Facebook advertising. It's something that everyone knows about in this space. It's something that you can easily go in and watch a YouTube video and then you'll figure out how it works. Not very complex, at least not at the entry level. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we make a campaign, one campaign per product, one ad set per product, one ad per product. So you're going to have three, uh, sorry, if we have five products, you're going to have five campaigns, you're going to have five ad sets and you're going to have five ads. And I know now there will be some marketing experts out there that will go like, oh, well, anyway, you know, according to the structure, they blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. That's not the point of this. The point of this is to find out what product sells, not to make the best structure here. We will go into that in another video because it's a whole other, much more complex subject. So five campaigns, five ad sets, five ads. Okay. Now, how do we target them? How do we optimize them? We optimize for purchase. We optimize for the same audience. Again, we should five five items that you could sell to virtually the same people because then we take that variable out of the way. Remember only adjust one variable and that one variable should be the product. It should not be who can buy it or how expensive it, expensive it is. It should just be the product. So we want to find products at the same price point. And that's why testing is such a huge thing. It's what you spend like, you know, 80% of your time on. And then once you find something that works, well, then you spend the rest of the 10%, uh, sorry, 20% and actually optimize this, okay? So five campaigns, five ad sets with virtually the same uh, targeting. You could just go broad, whatever it might be. The most important thing is just that it's the same, okay? That's it. Like if you choose to do whatever fancy thing you watched online and think is working, do that, but just do the same every single time so that the only thing we change is the product that we're trying to sell. Now that we go to the ad stage, the advertisement stage, what people are going to see, we're going to have one ad per product. And that one ad, it can be a video, it can be an image. Of course, it's going to vary what prices you're getting and all of that, but that is really not the purpose. If you're trying to make money right away with this, you should consider not doing the business because it's not feasible in the long run. What we're trying to do is figure out what will work and what can we build a business around long term, not what can we build a business around tomorrow. You know, uh, go play lottery instead. So we make a video. Let's say we make a video. We make a product video. We get all of the products home. Let's say it's a, uh, okay, these are all different price points. Let's say it's phones, right? Let's say it's phones. So let's say it's, a, it's an iPhone S whatever. And imagine we're back in 2015, right? So it's an iPhone versus a Samsung thing, right? Versus this other phone versus this versus that. All of them cost about the same. They can do about the same things. And we want to find out which of these actually sells the best. Well, then you're going to take the product, you're going to make a video, image, whatever ad about it that has the same angles as with all of the other products. So all of products are going to have the same angle, the same length, the same format, the same type of lightning. You're going to make them as identical as possible. And then you put that in as your ad, as each of the individual ads. Then the last thing you do is you put a budget on this. It depends on what you want to spend, but you need to be realistic about it, right? If you're selling something for $10,000, then probably it will cost you a bit more than $10 to sell, right? So think about, just be logical about it, right? If I were actually doing this for a business, what would a realistic budget be to get a handful of purchases on this over a week's time, right? That's how I would think about it. So put on the budget, let's say it's $1,000 each, so you're spending $5,000 for the whole week, or sorry, for like three days to a week, depending on how much you're spending. And then you take your hands and you place your ass on them. You don't touch anything, okay? You agree with yourself 
this is the amount of money I'm going to spend, and this is the period that I'm going to spend it over, which gives me a total spend of X, okay? And you don't touch anything until this has happened. Once this has happened, when you have, once you have spent the amount you want, once you have sit on your hands for a few days, and that's not one day or two days, we are talking three days plus, I would give it a week. When, when I do this, I give it a week, okay? Um, then you look at the results, you go in and you see, okay, how many pre-orders have I had? Or how many pre type orders have I had? How many people filled in their info and clicked purchase? How many did that? So you take our file, we say this one, well, we had one person, this one, we had eight people, this one, we had seven, this one, we had 11, and this one, we had 12. Okay, right, this is good information. So this one, let's say this one had five, so we killed that. These two didn't have a whole lot either, and now we have 11 and 12, right? Or 11 or 15 or whatever I said before, right? Then we have two products left. Okay, great. Now, what we can do is we can either continue testing these two and see how far we can get them. That's, you know, if, if you have the money and the time for it, basically, or we can just choose the winner. Now, of course, there is not a lot of data to base this on, but this is the easiest way to get started, right? Then let's say you pick a winner. Let's say you pick a winner, you pick, um, you know, you, you pick the Samsung, whatever, right? Just to use the phone example as before, I wouldn't actually do this with phones, but it's just to give you an example. So use the Samsung. And then what we do is we begin testing on other variables. So now we go in and we look at, okay, what different types of ads can I do? Maybe my click-through rate wasn't that good. So let's say it was, uh, I don't I don't freaking know, it was uh, 1.5, you got a Fiverr guy to make an advertisement for you. It's crap, you know, so you didn't get a whole, uh, a very good click-through rate, okay? So then you go in and you work on, okay, if I can double this, then I would get twice as many people to the page if the CPM is the same, which means that theoretically I should get twice as many purchases for the same budget. All right, then we make that. So, you know, you begin to adjust another variable because now you have the product fixed. You know that is working, right? And then you say, okay, this is the one that works best. I got 15 orders on it, example, right? I got 15 orders on it. Uh, in order to reach my, my KPI that I set, in order for this to meet my business goals, I would need to get 20 orders. Okay, so let's just revise. Is there any low hanging fruit? Well, we can make a better ad, right? Okay, let's try that first. Oh, great, now we had 21 purchases. Okay, then let's see, hmm, the funnel, I did use the template, which Olimar told me about, so all of this is the same. Maybe I want to make this more specific to techie people versus the guys who use the iPhone, because people who use an iPhone, I assume that they want something that's simple and easy to use and just works, whereas the people who use an Android, they either have something against Apple or it's because they want this more open ecosystem where they can do their own stuff. So maybe we talk a bit more about features here and like technical nerd stuff. Ah, okay, that improved a bit, it a bit more. So you see the concept here is make, decide on something and change one valuable, test it, move to the next thing. That's how you do testing. It's the same way you do product testing. It's the same way you test basically everything. Uh, so it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too complicated. Um, Hopefully this was valuable for you, uh, whoever's watching this. If it was, please let me know. Please also let me know how can I improve these videos? I will try to put out as much material as I can. Um, so please give me some feedback. What can I do better? Should it be explained in more simple terms? Should I use some other examples? Should I make the videos shorter? Should I make the videos longer? Am I not going in too much detail? Like, should I actually be, be talking more about these things? What do you want to see? Uh, what should I make a video about? Just let me know, throw a comment below. And uh, with that said, I'm wishing you all an amazing day. Bye.